Okay, in this one, I'm going to show you how I made this interesting portal effect right here. So you can see we have a blend of these two environments of like a desolate outer environment seamlessly transitioning to this inner nice lush environment. So there's two sections I want to go over. One is just the technical setup and how to get this working. You can kind of see what it's doing here with just, it's all in one single blend file. And then the second part is just some things that you can do to help blend these two environments a lot more seamlessly. Um, and just getting the lighting to work better together and just some things you can do to like fake uh, a, a nice uh, open environment when really it's just actually really closed off like this. So from this angle, it looks like this, but as you could see from the top view, it's we're just kind of basically faking it just as it looks and that's enough. So disclaimer, you it's hard to animate this. You can do it, but um, you're gonna be pretty limited with how much you can move the camera around. So this is mostly for stills, but if you're clever, you can find a way to make some sort of animation with this if you want. Okay, so let's go into a new file and I'll just show you the, the bare bones setup of how to make this work in the first place. And then after that, we'll go into just uh, like some things I'm doing here to make the environments blend a lot more seamlessly with uh, just the way the objects are interacting and extra lights and just the whole making it look nice part. But let's go to the technical side first so I can just show you how to set this up in a new file. Okay, so at first I tried a ray portal node, but that didn't really work for me. So I ended up just using light groups. So I'll show you how I set that up here. I'm gonna first of all, zoom the camera out a little bit. Just I don't like it really zoomed in for this kind of render. Let's add a floor plane. And then I'm just gonna block out a basic little portal structure. So we could just do a little, I'll just really quickly model this and do this. Extrude that out to a little thing. You can just model this however you want. It doesn't need to be anything uh, too crazy. Okay, so just for demonstration purposes, this will work fine. So basically we wanna have a light coming down here, which is, let me turn this on here, which is affecting the inner zone that we can see through the camera, but not affecting the outer zone, which is kind of like on the outside. So we want the light to be kind of coming from here, but contained within this zone here and not affecting these outside areas. So the easiest way I found to do that was first of all, block out the basic scene that you want. So it's a little bit tricky to move the camera around too much once you have this set up. So that's why I recommend just finding the basic angle at first, get that kind of uh, roughly mapped out. So I'll just stick with this example here for this demo, but uh, just know it's, it's a little bit tricky to change it too much once you get it set up. Okay, so we're gonna have um, a light coming down here, shining in here. What I'm gonna do is just separate out a floor section. So I'm just gonna add an edge loop on this floor and I'll just drag it to around where this portal starts. And then I'll just do another loop cut here. I can double that or just add two loop cuts, however you wanna do that. And then let's do, uh, I should probably turn on screencast keys here. Uh, if you have a loop cut, that's control B to bevel in case I wasn't clear. Okay, and then I'm just gonna take this and I'll just stretch this out so that I'm just scaling this these two vertices here up on the X axis so that they're kind of in line with my camera view and they're just going behind this structure here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this section here and I'm gonna, actually gonna separate it to a new object. So we can hit a P to separate by separate selection. And then now we have kind of two chunks of the outer section and then the inner section. What we wanna do here is whatever objects are inside this portal zone here. So if I have a cube and whatever else in here, um, these, I'm just gonna move them all to a collection. So I'm gonna take the floor and any, anything that's just in that zone, I'm gonna move it to a new collection and I'll just call this uh, portal or whatever you want to call it, it doesn't matter, the actual name doesn't matter. And then what I want to do here is we're going to use light linking. So I'm going to click on the light itself. I'm going to go into the uh, object properties over here and then underneath shading, there's light linking and there's shadow linking. We're actually going to use both. So if I just hit the drop down on this collection and then just choose the collection I just made, which is portal, which is just all the objects inside here, you can see it's actually kind of working now. So that means we can have a light source that's uh, like far away to simulate sun or whatever other light source you want to simulate. And that can just be affecting this one little zone. So from top view, you can see that's what that is doing. 
Okay, so one thing you'll notice at this stage is that if I have outside objects, say if I just add a cube over here, it's actually receiving bounce light from inside the portal. So it, this is actually not being directly affected by the light. You can see if I move it into where this light should be shining on it, you can see on these other cubes here, the light is hitting it directly. This one, the light is not directly hitting it. It's only the bounce light that's hitting that. So it's that is working as I would want. But if I move it outside, bounce light from the outside environment is reflecting off of these objects. So if I make this one like really big, for example, and make it a big sheet, light is reflecting off of that onto outside stuff. And that's going to kind of bleed over if, it, uh, if you have really bright light in here. Uh, you don't want that. So what I did in mine is I just added a cube over uh, basically just a box area over the, the portal zone. So it was just something really simple like this. I can just model a little thing like that. Kind of just expand this over the area that the camera is going to see. And then I'll just take that top edge there, move that up, and then I'll just delete the front face. Okay, this is where we actually want to also use shadow linking. So that's where I'm going to go into the shadow linking tab with this light still selected. And I'll just choose the same portal group that I made before. And now uh, it is working as I'm wanting it to. So what's happening here is when you turn on the shadow linking, um, only objects in the portal group are going to be uh, getting shadows from this light. But what this is doing is it's blocking out the bounce light that's coming off of these objects and hitting outside stuff. So you don't want this one, this blocker object. You don't want this inside the portal group. Uh, if I put it in here, you'll see that's where it's going to be just fully blocking the light. This blocker, this big box that's kind of a container of the entire zone, you want to move that outside of the portal collection so that it's not being affected by the light linking. Okay, and that's the cleanest way I've found to split up the two environments. And then you can still move this light around and do whatever you want with that. Change it to whatever light type you want, sun, whatever. Um, and it's it's not going to actually uh, affect the outside environment. So that means we can have as much stuff as we want over here. And it's going to be kind of independent of whatever's happening in there. So that's how you get this really trippy effect. So the, the main thing you have to remember here is that any objects that you add that are going inside of the portal zone, you need to move those objects into the portal collection. So you can just drag and drop it in or just with it selected in the viewport, press M and then just, this is the move to collection menu, just move it to the portal collection. Everything else can just be either in the uh, scene collection or whatever other collection, as long as it's not inside the portal collection since that we're, that's what we're using for the light linking and shadow linking, you're good to go. So just remember anything inside this zone, put it in the portal group, anything outside the zone, put it in any other collection. So if I move this outside, this monkey is still inside the portal group, which is why it's being affected by the sun, even though there's a blocker in front of it. So if you move it outside, you just have to take it out of the portal collection and move it to the scene collection or just whatever other outside collection, then it will behave properly. And then if you want to have it back in here, move that object back to the portal collection just so it gets the direct rays from this light here. Let's go to the world settings. I'll take the background down and then we can set up a secondary lighting setup outside here. So for mine, I just did an area light. I didn't even bother doing light linking on, on this one. I just kind of had it soft and outside this general zone. And that was kind of enough to separate them out. This one isn't really going to be affecting the inside one anyway, so it's fine to just have this kind of softly doing whatever outside this zone. So then what I did on mine is on this back section here, I'll actually just separate that selection right there. You can just put an image of a sky on this one as well. So uh, if you have seen my, if, you, if you've seen my video on skies, it's the same technique that I showed in that one, but I'll just show you really quick here. So you can just take any, any image of a sky, just drop that into the shader editor plug that into the emission and maybe the base color, turn up the strength, apply scale, and then uh, unwrap that, unwrap that with a cube projection. And then just make sure you line up the horizon line of this sky with the actual horizon in the render, or at least try to get it close. So that's, it looks a bit bad here, but that, that is the effect that I did in my actual render. 
And then you could do a second sky behind here if you want to do that. So we can duplicate that, scale that up. I'll just find, you know, some other cloudy sky that I can put on here. Put that into the emission on this one. Turn up the strength a little bit. Maybe run it into the alpha and turn down the base color. And then let's just turn down the strength. I really don't want that too strong to really try and separate these out here. We'll just unwrap that with a cube projection again, line up the horizon line, and then we can add some volume maybe. So I'll just do a cube, do a cube over the entire scene. I'll just bring that up like this. So we're gonna display the cube as bounds just to get that out of the way new material volume scatter on this plug it into the volume density 0.01 or what whatever whatever you want to do and now we kind of have it split up into these two really nice separate environments you could split up the volume into two different volume blocks if you want to do that uh, you can really just customize this however you want but that is the basic setup now one thing you'll notice is especially if you're using a sun there's going to be a hard line here um, I've had it glitch a couple of times where when I switch it to sun, it doesn't want to do that. But if you do end up getting a really hard line on the transition zone between the portal and the outside environment like this, that's why I like a spotlight. And then you can just turn up the blend or adjust the spot size or just move it around so that it's kind of a softer fall off towards the, the exit zone here. And then adjust the strength accordingly, adjust the color accordingly, whatever. And then what I like to do is you, you can add any supporting lights that you want. So if I just add like a, a point light over here, I'll just, uh, I'll just actually click on this light, control C to copy the color over here on this uh, spotlight, put it onto the point light, turn up the radius so it's nice and soft, um, turn up the strength a little bit to just have a nice supporting light that is easing the transition a little bit between these two spots. If you want, you can even go in here and turn off volume scatter for this light so that it's not a glowing orb. It's just kind of more ambient light. And then that can really help ease the transition between these two things, especially if there's objects that are in this weird zone here where it's not quite inside the, the portal, but it's not far enough outside and you're not really sure which collection it should really be in. When it's right around here, you just kind of have to try both and see what works better. But yeah. That's kind of the effect there. And then you, it's really nice to have objects that are coming out of it. So in mine, you know, I had like tree branches or roots or whatever and grass coming out. You can do it with whatever you want, but that's really another thing you can do to help really sell this effect is just have, have very clear objects that are transitioning from the outside to the inside. So then if you lower down the background strength and dial in the lighting and get some textures in here, you can get it looking pretty nice and you just have to play with you're, you're kind of managing two different environments at once so it's a bit tricky um but yeah it's a lot of fun to use this effect the reason i don't like having the spotlight or the light source right inside this zone and then you wouldn't have to worry about light linking at all is because the light it, it just it just feels like the light source is too close um you're going to end up either seeing the light itself if you turn up the size too much or it's just going to feel like it's too close to the objects you could maybe make it work but that's why i liked bringing it way out here and then you'll get more parallel shadows to be closer to sunlight it'll just feel a lot more natural if you do it this way and then have this kind of farther away brighter and that'll just give it a more natural angle and make it feel like it's much more open in here but it's actually closed off but having the light out here simulates it being really open and nice so once you have that set up, you can kind of just go crazy and decorate it as much as you want, just like you would a normal environment. You just have to remember that you're, you have to try and sell the illusion as much as possible. So some things I'm doing here is I'm doing things like this, where I have this bridge crossing over. It's just this, it's not anything special. It's just that placed in an area that it looks like it would be extending past where these things are, because it just, when you have it go, uh, you know, a big structure going across like that, you're kind of assuming that it extends past where it is getting cut off, even though it actually doesn't. Same thing with the trees. I'm trying to just place them in a way where it doesn't feel too forced. So I'm trying to place them off to the side as much as possible and just having it overhang a little bit. 
um, on, a, on a few of them I ended up doing an actual boolean on the trees themselves so like this one you can see it's fully getting clipped off right there just to push it extra into that zone where it feels like obviously if, if you're looking at the tree and it's cut off halfway you're gonna your mind is gonna assume that the rest of the other half of the tree is just behind there somewhere even though it's just fully getting cut off so it's all about just trying to sell the illusion as much as possible and just fake things in a way that it looks convincing enough and just try and think about if this were an open environment where would stuff be and try not to hand place it in a way where it looks too artificial and forced so you know i've got a an archway going off to the side which kind of makes it look like you you know there's pro it, it it makes you assume that there's some area over there that you could walk into uh, if you just have like walls or something it's just gonna make it look like you're looking down a corridor which you actually are so you want to try and make it look open as much as possible by the way all the vegetation here is uh from sweeper 3d's new add-on which i have been basically beta testing for him this is not out yet i'll do a, probably a full review of his add-on when it's out so just a sneak peek of what it is looking like there's a whole plant library whole scatter system really nice quality i'm i'm not like affiliated or anything i just uh, think this is we, we've both been wishing for this add-on to exist and he's actually just been making it so i'll do a few, full review when that comes out but anyways there's a little teaser of that so the other thing here you want to keep in mind is you want to have a very strong contrast between the two environments just in terms of the actual type of environment so you can see mine's you know uh like a desolate burning wasteland and the inside environment is a, a bright sunlight lush green vibrant garden kind of place right if they're too similar this effect isn't really going to work and it's just going to look like it's too much of the same thing so i'd recommend just cranking up the contrast uh, in terms of the type in, of environment you don't have to do this you can do some crazy sci-fi thing on the inside and medieval on the outside or space on the inside or you know whatever you want to do right um the important thing is just having a strong theme contrast between these two and that's how you're going to get the most striking difference between them and then yeah you just kind of have to figure out the transition zone i'm not even sure which collection these are in if they're in the outside or inside group but uh, it's not too hard as long as you just try one or the other you'll find whichever one works best and then just kind of use filler lights like I showed to ease the transition just like that and you're good to go this scene looks kind of funny from top view because you can see exactly how this is working but yeah that's the effect right there okay so that's pretty much it for this one if you want more in-depth step-by-step guides if you're more of a beginner and you want to learn exactly how I make environments from start to finish I'd recommend you go and check out the Cyber Environments course. I will link below. That's my newest one. I've been really, really happy with the results people have been getting with that one. Um, so out of all my courses, that is the newest one I'd recommend for urban cyberpunk sci-fi environments uh, that you'll be able to make on your own. So there's a link below to that. Other than that, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.